When we think about how to control the conversation, it is very, very popularized in media that it's the person who's talking the loudest. It's the person who's shouting, who's getting everyone's face, and who really raises their voice and gets everybody's attention. But in reality, my friends, an amazing way to control any conversation is to ask questions. People love talking. People absolutely love talking. Right? I said it earlier, it's the value of listening is so underrated. People love talking. Everybody loves hearing their own voice. I'm guilty of that too. We're human beings, of course. Now, what happens is, when you start to ask questions, what happens? Who does most of the talking? You or the other person who has to answer? The other person who has to answer. Who has to answer, excuse me. So what ends up happening? They start answering your question. And when they start answering your question, they listen to their own voice. They feel better about themselves. But, who's controlling the conversation? The question that you ask can be about any topic. Now, obviously, you can't jump from pineapples on pizza to, I don't know, the pride parade. Like, there has to be like a logical uh, transition, right? From question to question. You got to ease into it. It can't be one question is here, one question is here. They've, they have to, uh, you know, they have to build on each other in a sense. But my friends, the beauty of guiding questions are you can ask a question. You can steer the vehicle and take it whichever way you want. But because the person is doing most of the talking, it's as if they have their foot on the gas pedal and they keep giving more examples and they keep talking about their feelings and, and different perspectives. So they feel as if they're controlling the conversation. They're doing all the talking. They might even apologize. They'll go, oh, I've been talking so much. Like, I'm, you know, what do you want to talk about? Even though it's already what you want to talk about. Guiding questions are absolutely unbelievable. Counselors use them all the time. Psychologists use them all the time. There is a huge, huge idea in this world of, of counseling, in the sense that, have you ever had someone come to you and say, man, I'm mad, I have this problem. And you go, oh, okay, what's going on? And they give you this problem and you give them a solution. And they go, nah, that's not going to work. And you go, okay. And then you give them another solution. And they go, nah, nah that's not going not, not to work either. And you say, oh, um, well, how about this solution? And they go, no, 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 that's not going to work either. So then 50% of you is going, wait, why did I, why, why did you come up with the problem if you didn't want me to give my solution? Now you're going to say, well, Daniel, sometimes people just want to complain for the sake of complaining, right? I agree. But I would also add on that statistically, my friends, people are more likely to execute on a solution that they have come up with on themselves. Let me rephrase that. People are statistically more likely to execute on a solution that they think they came up with by themselves. So what I'm saying here, my friends, to break it down is your buddy comes to you. Let's, let's talk about uh, pop. He's drinking pop all the time. He's drinking two, three uh, cans of pop every day. And he says, oh, man, I hate it. It sucks, man. I have way too sugar, way too much sugar in my body. I'm getting overweight. Now, the direct thing that everybody does is they go, Stop drinking so much Pepsi, so much cola, so much pop. And for whatever reason, man, human instinct sometimes is like, yeah, I know, I guess that's what I should do, but it's just so hard, man. You know, and then and there's, that, there's that backlash where it, where it turns to, instead of it being me and you on a team trying to find a solution, now it's me versus you. As opposed to someone says, oh, man, you know, man, this sucks, dude. I'm overweight. I'm drinking way, like, I have way too much sugar in my body. You could ask. Now, let's say, here's the thing, my friends. You know that it's the pop. You're 100% sure that it's the pop. What do you want to do when you're teaching a small child? Do you throw them the answer? Do you say, two plus two, the answer's four? Or do you guide them towards it and let them come up with it to increase their self-esteem, increase their confidence, and encourage them to continue doing what they're doing? So what you do right then, my friends, is you indirectly guide them to the answer so that they come to the conclusion that they came up with it on, on their own. Because if they do believe they came up with it on their own, they're going to be a whole lot more likely to execute. So it's the difference between me saying, hey man, lay off the pop. And I'm going, oh, yeah, you're right, but you know how it is, da da da, da. Rather than him coming up and being like, yo man, like I'm, I'm overweight and you know I'm having way too much sugar, man. I don't know what's going on. And I'd say, hmm, why do you think that is? 
I know exactly why that is. But let me see. I want to bring self-awareness to him. Because a lot of the times, my friends, the people with problems literally, literally just have to say something out loud to hear and be like, oh, like this is so simple. It totally makes sense. But there's something about it, my friends. I got to do more research on this where you have something subconsciously, like you know you're aware of it, but it's not until you verbally speak it and you hear yourself that you go, oh, huh. Yeah, that, I mean, that's an easy solution. So I would ask, I would go, well, what makes you say that? Like, why do you think that is? And then maybe he'd tell me about his weight. Now he's gained weight recently. And I'd say, oh, um, do you have any habits that might pertain, that might relate to that cause? And he'd name off a few habits. And then, and then I'd ask him straight up, I'd be like, okay, which one do you think is the most detrimental to your health? Like, what do you, what do you think it is? And then he'd go, oh man, it has to be, well, it could probably pop, man. I'm probably sure it could pop two, three times a day more than I should. And then do you know what I'd say? I'd look at him and go, hmm, you know what? That is a valid statement. I can totally understand that. Now, what could you do to, to better yourself? What can we do to, to, to adjust this problem? And he'd go, you know what, man? I just have to stop drinking pop. That's it. Now, many people listening to this might go, Daniel, what's the difference between you telling him isn't that just easier? Like, hey man, get off the pop. As opposed to waiting for him, playing this game of guiding questions just so he says the answer that's already so simple. It is 100% worth it, my friends. 100%. Because the goal here is not to throw an answer in his face. To go, hey man, this is the answer. Get out of here. When you're tutoring someone in anything, at math, you don't go, hey man, the answer's four. You want to teach them how to get to that answer on their own. Right? right? The classic fisherman tale, right? I can catch a fish for you and give it to you all day. But wouldn't it be more valuable if I taught you how to fish yourself? So what you're doing here, folks, is when you're asking these um, guiding questions, you are leading people towards their own answers. You're making them a little bit more self-aware of who they are and their habits, getting, the, getting them to say it out loud. And because he said it, not me. I made the other guy, my imaginary friend here, say, you know what? I should lay off. I made him identify the problem. I said, hey, man, what do you think it is? And, you know, he said the pop. I said, well, um, you know, what do we have to do? What's the solution? He said the solution. And then all I did was I validated him. I said, yeah, man, you know what? You're right. That is a pretty good idea. Maybe I'd say, that's what I would do. Good on you. So I'm giving him all the props because my friends, I did not come up with the answer. That answer was his. 100%. Don't get that wrong. Did I guide him? Did I influence him down a certain path? Sure, you could say that. But to say that I had his answer, hey man, it was pop. Maybe it was something else. Maybe it was something that I didn't know. Maybe it wasn't pop. Maybe it was uh, cigarettes. Maybe it was, who knows? This way, my friends, when you ask the person, you get them, you throw the ball in a certain area. You say, this is the topic I want to focus on. The more specific the question, the better. And then you let them nail it out of the park. And when they do, you clap and you pat them on the back.